All right, beauty gang, first things first, you're gonna go ahead and put your dome cap on your mannequin head and make sure the two lines running down the middle of your dome cap are what you utilize as your guide to placing the cap in the middle of your forehead and nape area of the back of your head. Then you're gonna place your front tool one inch at most or less away from the start of your dome cap so when you put on the wig, the hair won't lay exactly on your hairline. Now when it comes to the placement of your front tool, this part is very important because it ensures that your front tool will lay flat. You're going to T-pin down the sides of the front tool starting right at the edge where the lace is the darkest. Here I'm just showing you that T-pinning the sides right on the thickened lace doesn't always mean it'll lay right the first try. There should be no gaps or humps when the frontal is T-pinned down. So if there is, it's no big deal. Just readjust the frontal and make sure you pull down the edges very taut. This is how flat you want your frontal to lay before you sew it down. Now you're gonna grab your needle and thread. Make sure you use just enough thread so that you don't run out while sewing down the frontal. When you have the right amount, cut it and then pull the thread through the needle to make the ends of the thread both even before knotting them together. No, by the way, I did not get the thread through the needle on the first try. This is YouTube. Come on now, you know better than that. We don't show the mistakes. <laughs> okay, anyway, moving on. After you get your knot at the end, you're gonna go ahead and start the sew. Now this part is very important too because you do not wanna sew through the elastic band or else it will not go over your head, girl. So go ahead and make sure you are only sewing through the cloth the cloth only you will feel the difference between if you're going through the elastic band or the cloth so that is just very important to keep in mind but yeah sewing down the frontal is easy the hardest part is t-pinning it down flat making sure the knot you make at the end of the thread is big enough not to go through the dome cap cloth and making sure you don't sew through the elastic band. Everything after that, as you can see, is a breeze. But yeah, when you get to the end of sewing down the front tool, you're gonna make sure, well, I personally make sure that I kind of loop through the same area three times before tying it down with a knot by wrapping the thread around the needle three times, as you're gonna see here. And then you're gonna pull through and push the thread down so that it makes a tight, firm knot. You can go ahead and cut off the remaining thread and this is how flat your front toe should lay. You see I'm tugging on it, that's a good sew job right there. So yeah, moving on. Since we're using the glue method, you're gonna wanna place a plastic bag or a cap on top of the mannequin head so the wig doesn't get stuck and so you can make sure the glue is completely dry before you put it on your own head. Now it's time for the bundles, girl. So you're gonna go ahead and measure out your track from one edge of the frontal to the other and keep your finger placement exactly where the end of the track measured out so you'll know exactly where to cut. After that's done, you're gonna take your wig glue and drag it right across the top of the track. Then you're gonna place the track very carefully exactly where you measured it out prior to putting on the glue and firmly hold down the edges of the track for a couple of seconds. Right here I'm just demonstrating the U-shaped pattern we're going to do to lay the tracks until we get to the top. So here again we're going to do the steps of measuring out the track from edge of the frontal to edge of the frontal. Keep your finger placement on it to cut the track exactly where you measured it out. Then apply the glue at the top of the track all the way across. Oh and real quick I want to show you guys not to panic if you get the glue on you it rubs right off. Back to the regular schedule you're going to add the track right where you measured it prior to adding the glue and hold it firmly then tap it down now you're going to continue the process all the way until we get to the top when the tracks have formed a defined u-shape Here you can see as we gradually keep progressing upward it's really going to begin to form that u-shape that is what you want the wig to look like Now as you formed your definite U, you're gonna go ahead and start laying the tracks horizontally between the U, as I'm about to show you. So nothing has really changed. You still measure out the track and then cut it accordingly and add your glue on the top of the track to place it down. Obviously just the tracks are a little bit shorter than what it was when we first started out. As you're placing down your final track, you really want to make sure you get it right along the edge of that frontal so there is no gap at all to be seen. 
Now I personally let my wigs air dry for 24 hours and these are my results. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> this is Ali Julia Malaysian curly hair by the way you guys. And now I'm gonna show you guys how I cut off that dome cap that's underneath the lace frontal cause it doesn't need to be there anymore. You're gonna cut right slightly above the threaded lines demarcation as I'm about to show you now. And the reason I say cut slightly above it cause girl you do not wanna risk potentially cutting your frontal or cutting some thread that attaches the dome cap to the frontal and then your whole wig is messed up and you just spent an hour so making it, girl, no. Be very careful. Just cut slightly above it. Ain't nobody gonna see it. Ain't nobody gonna see it. Oh, and if some of you guys have noticed that the hair is now ombre in this clip, I have a video already up on my channel of how I achieved this color. So if you haven't seen that video, definitely go watch it after this is over. But yeah, real quick, I'm gonna just place the wig back on top of the mannequin head. And I'm gonna attempt to show you guys how I kind of customize my lace frontals so that they look as natural as possible. Now here you can see how thick and dense the frontal is, that's a no-no, okay? It's way too unnatural. So you're gonna go ahead and spritz the edges of the frontal, cause that helps with being able to pluck the hairs more easily and comb through the hair. By the way, all you need is water. Then you're gonna take a rat tail tooth comb and you're gonna make a part. Now granted, it's a part down the middle of the hair already, right? Now you're gonna kinda make a curved part on either side. It's up to you which side you wanna start on. And that's where you're gonna begin to start plucking away the hair right at the indented part that you make, okay? You can literally see the hairs plucking out as I'm doing this too. So that kinda helps also with you knowing how much you're taking out. Then you're gonna go ahead and every once in a while use a rat tail comb to comb through the hair to make sure that you're not you know, over plucking and whatnot. So yeah, I'm gonna keep plucking a little bit because I want this little part to be defined because you're gonna see how natural it's gonna help the wig look when we're done. Now after you've plucked a decent amount out of that part that you made, you're gonna go ahead and go back in the opposite direction and make a part that forms like a triangle shape as you can see here. Then you're gonna go ahead and focus on plucking in the middle of that triangle and then use the same method of using the small tooth comb to comb out any excess strands that you plucked out. You're gonna see me go back and forth between plucking the middle of the triangle and the front of the triangle in order to make the hair as less dense as possible. As you continue this method, you should start to see like a gradient effect in the frontal and that's what you want. That's what our natural hairline looks like. So I'm gonna continue kind of slightly plucking in certain areas that my hair is kind of thin in and hopefully it'll turn out natural. So here I am again working my way down making another slightly curved part like I did in the very beginning and then I'm going to start plucking this part area also. By the way the parts don't have to be crisp or perfect because a natural hairline is, doesn't operate like that anyway so if your parts aren't like completely a straight line you're good don't worry. Also don't forget to go back the opposite way and make your little triangle to pluck in the middle of it so that you know you have that gradient effect. I really hope all this is making sense to you guys. I also want to stress the importance of thinning out that hair area right next to the middle part on both sides. It just makes the frontal look so much more natural when it's thinned out. So yeah, if you guys continue my customizing method, this is pretty much the hairline that you should end up achieving. Very natural hairline like, y'all, look, this junk look bomb. But yeah, all right, so moving on. Next on the agenda is showing you guys how to cut the lace off the lace frontal. Well, the unnecessary lace. As you can see, it goes over my ear, which is very uncomfortable. You don't wanna do that. Plus, I don't like the little sideburn edges that frontals usually come with. So I like to go ahead and cut those extra areas off, but you wanna be very careful because you don't wanna to cut too much lace off and then the frontal just doesn't lay right. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm very particular on how I part this hair so that I only have to cut the hair that covers up my ear area rather than cutting way too much. Then once I feel like I've parted the right amount, I go ahead and twist it up so the hair doesn't get all mixed up with the hair I don't plan on cutting off. Now that that side is done, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same exact method on the other side.
Here you're just gonna see me double checking to make sure I'm only cutting off the lace that is covering over my ears that I don't want before I decide to cut it all off. And this is another reason I decided to twist up the area that I plan to cut off because it helps a lot more not cutting off the wrong thing. By the way, with cutting off the lace, I feel like it goes without saying, but I'll just say it anyway, that you need to be very careful that you don't cut too much of the lace off or your wig will be destroyed, okay? Just be very careful. I have a very light hand when I'm cutting it and I'm very detailed to make sure that I don't go too far behind the line of demarcation. So yeah, these are my end results. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful, informative, and all that good stuff. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And until next time, guys, bye.